Guys, what are we looking at today? Well, there on the table in front of you is the CRKT Psych. It is a knife that got discontinued just as it got released. So there's not a lot of these around. So this is a knife that this might be the only chance you're going to get to see it unless you go over to Coyote Trails EDC and see his video that really, really was the reason why we have this. So let's turn this around. We'll take a look at it from above. Right, guys, like I said in the intro, we definitely have an interesting knife here on the table. This is the CRKT Psych. It was a very limited run. They did just a few of these, like one run, and then discontinued the model. Um, so kind of interesting, really unique deployment on this. But first things first, let's go ahead and do some size comparison so you can see this is not a small knife. So there's your Benchmade 940. You can see this is a fairly good sized knife. Benchmade 940 is not a small knife. It's just an average sized EDC, not small. Um, but you can see good bit longer than the, the Benchmade 940. Your next knife is the Ky Kaiser Big Letter XL. This is a nine inch knife. So you can see large knife overall. And then as always, your final knife for comparison is going to be the Chris Reese Sabenza. Um, large 21. So you can see it was just pretty much one for one the size of the big letter XL. So we're looking at about a nine inch knife. Like I said, first day, don't have any specs. I'll get specs and stuff for the next video. Let's get this out of the way. And let's talk about the few things that I have noticed first day in pockets today. All right. As I said, today is first day in pocket. I'm not going to do a lot of cutting with this knife. It is kind of a rare knife in the fact that it was only produced for a short period of time and then immediately discontinued. So you're looking at CRKT. Um, this is a faux dagger. Um, there is no steel marked on this. I'm going to say it's probably knowing CRKT, probably 9CR, uh, 18 MOV, 8CR, possibly in that range of, of budget steel. It is done really, really well, though. The grind on it is very very well done for a dagger even though that's fairly thick blade stock they did a really good job transitioning this down to as a dagger it's not perfect but i'm saying as a dagger they did a pretty good job it is attractive it uses a slide lock we're gonna talk about that in a minute um g10 uh g10 scales over liners but it's not your typical liner lock because like i said we're gonna talk about the lock and then a really decent pocket clip that i do not dislike it's kind of got like a ghost face on it um but the pocket clip is not at all a hot spot so uh good things i've noticed so far is it's really comfortable in hand and, and a lot of things you know that go along with it it's pretty easy just to to look at it and go it's got a really good dagger shape to it hang on a second landscaper's coming so what I was saying is it's got a really good feel in hand when it's open. It uh, it has like that typical dagger shape. You even have like the hand guards, really nice and straight, almost coffin ended handle, but it's really comfortable. It's a nice broad grip on it. It feels really good in hand. It feels secure uh, without jimping. Uh, there's no jimping on it. And the the whole thing is it it's got a really good feel in pocket as well. It's not horrible. It's not a deep carry pocket clip. You can't carry this forward of the um forward towards the zipper but it definitely doesn't feel bad in pocket the action on it feels nice and smooth uh with that glide lock uh you've got definite positive lock on it i don't really feel much rattle when it's open there's not much play there's a little bit but not much not a, not compared to a lot of the things i've seen come out of crkt the grips have got some really good uh some really good grooves cut in them that you can feel with your fingers. They're sharp enough on the edges that when you've got a hold of it, you feel like you have got good purchase on that. Doesn't feel slippery, almost like jimping for the handle, but it's not aggressive. It's not something that's going to tear up pockets in and out of pocket. Pocket clip feels about perfect and it's a really comfortable pocket clip. It does not, it does not assault your, your hands at all in an, you know, in a bad way. It's not a hot spot. It, uh, it works really well. It adds to the grip. As a matter of fact, my finger kind of falls into that when I'm holding it naturally. So all in all, between the look of it, the feel of it, the way it's ground, I'm not at all disappointed with how this knife looks. Um, 
So let's go ahead and talk about the lock. Like I said, this is the glide lock. And the way you use this lock is you push down on that button and then slide it forward with the pad of your thumb, swing that back down, and then re-engage the lock. It's called the glide lock. CRKT, this is not the only knife that has this. CRKT has used this on several other knives. And once you get the hang of it, it doesn't feel at all odd. It's just the first few times that you have to get used to how it feels. And you, I still do it every once in a while where I, I kind of engage on that. But um, it works when you push down on this button and you use the pad of your thumb to, to, to slide it forward. When you push down on that button, it disengages it from a little latch in there. You swing that around and then you re-engage the lock and you're good to go. It almost is like there is no lock. It looks like a button lock, but it's not. And you just do the exact opposite to close it. And uh, so it's pretty cool in that. Now, I will say I have noticed a few things about this knife that are on the negative side. So, you know, all the positives of this being really cool and, and all that, I've found a few things that I'm not a big fan of, so we'll talk about those, but I don't think they're the reason that this knife was discontinued and that you can no longer get it, why it's so rare. So let's go ahead and we'll flip this around and we will look at it uh, from the negative side. First things first, this knife is a little heavy. It really is. It's not horribly heavy, but it's also not like something I would consider light duty carry. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's hefty and it's got a good bit of weight to it. I don't dislike that though. It, the weight is where I would want it. It's just right up about that pivot point, uh, where your fingers pinch. I like that either neutral or a little bit of blade forward, but it is heavy. I do have to admit. Uh, the only other real thing is the lock itself. It can be a little cumbersome at times, and you actually can do some stuff to it that kind of is wonky. So when you push down on this, first of all, I'll say my thumb is sore, uh, which is unusual for me. Uh, my thumb is sore because when, you, when you've got it locked open, it takes a lot more force to push down on that button and slide that than it does when it's in the closed position, which makes sense. You want it to be a little bit more secure in the open position, there you go, than it is in the closed position. Um, so it is a little bit awkward to get used to that and you will have sore thumbs because that's not, like they honestly should have chamfered that and rounded that a lot more. It's a lot of that has to do with, that's just a sharp edge and you kinda have to push down and slide so you're sliding off of that. So it's a little sharp. Um, the other thing is that when you open it and then you get ready to close it, if you happen to pull back on that, it kind of locks up and then you got to push that back up and then it wants to catch. No matter what you do, you got to kind of just go back and start the whole evolution over again. It's it's probably better as a two-hand closer, um, but it's, it's definitely much more pronounced that that happens in the going from open to closed than it does in the closed to open. Like opening it, no problem. Closing it, it's a lot easier to get that slid down a little bit and have it out of position ever so slightly. Like it's it's it starts to lock and you can just feel it in there and you just have to, you gotta make sure that you've got it in the right position. And a lot of times you just gotta start back at the beginning and then start over. That could be some of the problems they had with it, but I've avoided that by instead of using this. So when I unlock it, I just put my thumb on the blade and then push down. So that's really the only negative is like, that's really sharp. And then the lock sometimes has a tendency to slide. So I'm not sure what else I'm gonna find in the course of carrying this for a while. But like I said, this is first day. And I just was so intrigued by this knife when I saw Jeff's video over at Coyote, Coyote Trails. Um, I'm definitely gonna put a link to his channel in the description. So you should, guys should go follow it. But yeah, it, it's definitely interesting. It's something I had never seen. Yeah, see? See how that like didn't didn't want to close properly, and so now you have to go up. There you go. Um, so I mean, I can see some things with it, but compared to a lot of other CRKTs, I'm not seeing a quality issue here. Really, I don't know if it maybe maybe quality, and they had some that were bad, and they got feedback on them, and then I could see this being a little bit pricier to produce than a lot of the other knives uh, that are just simpler. So that might have something to do with it. They listed it as a quality issue. I really don't see it though. So, but we will see. So guys, just a quick look, a first look at a very interesting knife that came in that I thought would be fun. So I moved it up the shooting schedule um, 
as quickly as I could. So let's turn this around, do some final thoughts, and I'll send you out about your day. So yeah, guys, this was a lot of fun. I ran across the video that uh, that Coyote Trails did. I reached out to him, and I was like, hey, I would really love to see this on the channel. I'd never seen it before. And I'm glad I did. He was kind enough to send it along. So if you could, please, I am going to mention him in the description of this video if you could go follow his channel. Uh, this thing is this thing is nice, like I said in the video, and I can't figure out why they discontinued it. So that's basically it on this one. We will see more. This was just first day in pockets, like I said. So uh, I will try to find specs and stuff like that for a full review. Uh, guys, if you like the videos, give them a thumbs up. If you don't like them, give them a thumbs down. But please try to tell me why. I can't change the content if you don't tell me what you don't like. If you want to support the channel, it's as simple as like, share, subscribe, drop a comment, hit the bell icon. If you do hit the bell icon, make sure that you've got notifications set to all and make sure you got notifications turned on your device. And like I say, likes are the most important thing you can do for a channel. If you've watched the video this far and you haven't liked it, shame on you. But if you're watching any other channel's video for more than 30 seconds, if you haven't dropped a like, you're doing those channels a disservice. If you want to support the channel financially, there's a couple ways you can do it. I have a ton of affiliate links down below. Any of the affiliate links that are on Amazon, it does not matter what you purchase. I still get credit for it. You can just think of those like uh, like a link to my affiliate store on Amazon. So whatever you're purchasing, if you're going to do some Amazon shopping, please use one of my affiliate links down there. Coffee brand coffee. Some of the best coffee I've ever had. 5% off your overall order if you use either my coupon code crazy sharp, all one word, or the affiliate link down in the description below. Guys, the other way you can do it is I have a membership. We have a lot of members. We have a lot of fun with the member stuff. I have got a gilded server that all of the members have access to. Baseline and premium tier members are, members are automatically entered into giveaways that I do on a gilded server. And the premium guys have access to a sharpening tutorial series here on YouTube. So if you want to support the channel, those are the ways you can do it. Guys, that's the end of the video. Keep it clean in the comment section. If it's your birthday, happy birthday. And I will see you in the next video.